Did your parents tell you what life was like in residential schools? How do you feel about it? I grew up with my mom in an alcoholic home. My mom drank. I, I later learned. I realized that my mom drank. Because of what happened to her in residential school, you know, growing up as a kid, I didn't, I didn't know anything about residential school. I only knew certain things. Whenever she was sleeping in a room,、um, she mostly slept on the couch because she couldn't sleep in her room because of residential school. If she, whatever room she was sleeping in, mostly the living room, we could never turn out the lights. If you switch off a light. She would jump up, and she would scream and yell. Turn the light back on. Turn the light back on.、Um, because in residential schools,、um, bad things happen when the lights turn out. Wasn't until I, be, I think around eighteen or nineteen years old, when I started to realize or learn about residential schools. And it wasn't until after I started my dance group called Butterflies and Spirit that I started going to conferences and I started going to events about residential school, and I started to learn more about it and what it did to our people. When I finally got the courage to ask her, and she looked at me and she spoke of the first time when she was taken. She said she was. About four or five years old, she remembered being taken, and she remembered counting every single mountain on the way to the residential school because she wanted to find her way home. And I could see in her eyes she was she was hurt. She was, you know, ready. So she was crying. And、so I, I could see that pain. I just burst into tears, and she was crying. I, I could never imagine a little girl having to go through that. So then my whole life started to make sense. I was just like, no wonder she drank. You know, she was drinking her pain away. And、um, yeah, eventually she she ended up passing away from her drinking. You know, right after she passed away, I, I was obviously sad, but then with that came anger, and my automatic reaction was, I wanted to sue the government of Canada. I was just like, I blame Canada for killing my mom because they took her, they kidnapped her. <laughs> I say kidnap. You know, they they were ripped away from their parents, all these children, and.、Um, Put into these residential schools that were run by、um, Christians, by the churches, the nuns, the priests. That's where all the the rapes happen, the violence, the、um, beatings, the medical experiments. Those schools, the residential schools, were horrible places for these children, and where they were brainwashing them to assimilate them. To white people, what role do residential schools have played in destroying indigenous culture? What is the biggest harm of residential schools to human rights? In the residential schools, they weren't allowed to practice their cultures. You know, even the language. You know, if they spoke, they were their tongues would get stabbed or burned. Or my mom used to speak the language. My mom used to dance. My mom used to sing. Um, but it was all taken away in residential schools because whenever they practiced it, they were beaten or killed、uh, just for practicing the culture. They are the genocide, the genocide against our people, which has happened and is still happening. So that's the biggest harm is the genocide against our people. You know, when they they took these children, took our children. They were trying to kill the Indian and the child. That's that's what they were doing. They're still doing it to this day. We don't have the residential schools, but we have the foster care system. Now we have all these children 
not going into a school they're going into these separate homes across canada but also like at least in the residential school everybody was together but even the siblings were together and right now the siblings are being separated in different homes in foster care so that makes it worse because now they don't have each other like they did in the residential school Canadian governments issued apologies for the development of residential schools. Do you think it is enough? No, Stephen Harper's apology was not. I just felt like it wasn't an actual apology. Like when you apologize to somebody, you don't do those things again. I just feel like it was filled with euphemisms and rhetoric and rhetoric and.、Um, It was just not. It was just not an apology at all. Did the government ever give any compensation to your parents or other victims? So my mom, she she got that. It was about twenty five to thirty thousand dollars, from what I remember. One, I don't think it was enough.、Um, I I I just feel like the process to even get that was horrible. Even with the TRC, you know, they came out with all these recommendations, which are not being implemented. All these recommendations, all these inquiries, and you know, they just sit on shelves. We are trying to push people to actually follow through with these recommendations. There's so many、um, recommendations out there that have not been implemented that could save our lives. And they just don't. Like, majority of Canada is racist. I I say this all the time. On the issue of genocide in residential schools, why did the Canadian government fail to truly protect the human rights of Indigenous people? There's so many reasons why. One, the policies, the racist policies. Murray Sinclair says it so well. He said, no matter what. You could take all the racist people who are working in government out, but it doesn't matter because the new people coming in will have to follow those same exact racist policies. So there's no point of getting rid of those racist people when those policies are there. That's one of the many reasons why we're not protected and why we're still being killed to this day. It's because of all these racist policies in the system. There's so many white murderers out there that get away with killing our indigenous women and girls. It's insane. Now, they have all the evidence there, but they get let go free. So the laws are killing us as well. The Canadian laws. There's white supremacy, like. With white people and the way they act, the the way they're they're racist. I majority of them are racist in this country, and that's what's killing us. Right? It's the racist white people, and they use it as weapons as well. They use anything that they've got, and they it's just so natural to them. Like they will call the police. On us for no reason, you know. I, I'm not afraid to call them white people. The white supremacy is horrible. It's, I can't even really like the whole、um, convoy that went across Canada and they were at the parliament. Like, if those were indigenous people doing that, they would have shot them right away, you know. But they let those white guys in their trucks convoy over there. And, Uh, they're just—they let them get away with everything. You know, white people can get away with everything. They were the ones that were very violent. They were the ones that were starting fires. They were going after them. They were attacking them. So, I, I yeah, <laughs> white supremacy is definitely killing us here.